Did you hear about when Apple Maps software said that Taiwan was a part of China? A few years before that, Google did the same thing. Well, just about a month ago, it just came out that HarperCollins removed Israel from Middle Eastern maps atlases for schools. They apologized, but the damage was done. By the way, last thing we checked, they're still being sold now. Face it, maps are biased, and Bible maps are too, politically, textually, and doctrinally. Biblical archaeology is based on the belief that if the Bible says something is there, then I start digging where it says, and I will find evidence of what the Bible says about that place. Because the Bible's true. For over a hundred years, archaeologists have been sticking the shovel in the ground where the Bible says and finding what it says is there. Even when people said it couldn't possibly exist. But let's say the map maker decides to change the location on the map and they stick in their shovel and they find it's not there. That could make me start doubting the Bible. And then I may start telling other people the Bible is not true because Bible maps matter. Want some examples? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. Take a look right here. Ever heard of the Hittites? Can you see it? Ever heard of the Hittites? The Bible talks about them all the way back in Genesis. For centuries, Bible critics have scoffed and said, there's no such thing as Hittites, never was. Then someone took the Bible at face value. They started digging where the Bible said it was, and lo and behold, guess what? Now the critics had to admit that they exist. In fact, some critics have gone so far as to say the Hittite Empire was one of the largest in the ancient world. They really missed it on that one, didn't they? But the Bible was correct, literally, even, by the way, in Genesis. So, did the Jews miraculously cross the Red Sea or the Reed Sea? Oh, your professor will say, well, in Hebrew, that's Yom Suf, a sea of reeds. And, of course, reeds only grow in shallow water. Does it matter? Yes, it does. The Bible says in Exodus that the entire Egyptian army, and not only Exodus, by the way, the entire Egyptian army drowned in shallow water? Do you see how it could cause someone to doubt the Bible? It really does matter. I've got news for you. You can call it the Red Sea, the Reed Sea, or the Fred Sea. It doesn't matter. I can show you where the Bible says it is. Today, we call it the Gulf of Aqaba. And there are no reeds there, by the way. Get out. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 9, verses 26 to 27. 26. And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Ezion Geber, which is beside Iloth, on the shore of the Red Sea, in the land of Edom. Well, everyone knows where Ezion, Geber, and Eloth are. They're right here. Can you see it? There. Right there. The top of the Gulf of Aqaba. Right where the Bible says it is. That's called the Red Sea or the Reed Sea. And this Red Sea is enough for Solomon to put his navy of ships there. And that's not all. Verse 27, And Hiram sent in the navy his servants, shipmen that had, the knowledge, had knowledge of the sea, with the servants of Solomon. So Hiram, king of Tyre, a major seafaring city, sees enough of this to bring his own servants, who had knowledge of the sea, to assist in Solomon's navy. Wow, that would be enough water to drown an entire Egyptian army. Isn't that interesting? 
What's so important about the Red Sea? Well, after you cross it, eventually you come to where? Mount Sinai. It gets bigger. You see, Constantine, the first Catholic Pope, had these visions, according to legend, and he would then call his so-called Christian mother Helena in and tell her, I saw this great biblical site, go find it. And she'd go with her guides and they'd usually point out some pagan location to say, there, that's where that event happened. Well, eventually they got themselves into the Egyptian peninsula. And when she got there, they took her down here, in this, oops, right here, in that place, in that triangle there. They took her down there and she came to a mountain and said, there, that's it, that's the mountain, that's Mount Sinai. And what do we call this place now? The Sinai Peninsula. It matters, doesn't it? Funny. You see, Galatians 4.25 doesn't say that. Galatians 4.25 says, For this agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Now, if you went to the Gulf of Aqaba, let's go ahead and use this again. If you crossed the Gulf of Aqaba, you'd come to Midian. And that's the place where Moses was a shepherd. And when he was a shepherd, he took his sheep up to the mountains. Could it be that one of those mountains is the real Mount Sinai? That's something for another vlog. Suffice it to say, if the map says something that disagrees with what the Bible says, it's the map that's wrong and the Bible that's right. If the Bible says it was a hill, it was a hill. If the Bible says it was by the mountain, it was by the mountain. You can believe it. See, map makers have undermined the faith of many for a very long time by putting things on maps where they didn't really happen, where the Bible didn't say they belong. Don't trust them. The map is wrong. The Bible is right. They didn't get supernatural revelation, did they? Of course not. At Fuller Seminary, back in the 80s, it was hard to find a single professor who actually believed the Exodus happened the way the Bible says it did. About nine months before I started at Fuller, I went to the president's office to talk to the president and my later professor, David Allen Hubbard. I couldn't talk to him, but I could talk to his secretary, and so I did. I said to her, do you believe that the Israelites really crossed the Red Sea the way the Bible says they did, and that the entire Egyptian army drowned in the water like the Bible says? Well, no. You don't? Then do, do you believe that God became a man? Oh yeah. That he was born of a virgin? Yeah. And that Jesus lived a sinless life and he died for everyone's sins? Yeah. And that he died and was buried and the third day rose again? Uh-huh. And that he went to heaven after that? Yes. Well, if you believe these miracles, then why don't you believe those? And she had nothing she could say. Let me just sum up for now. Map makers are wrong. Whenever they put in a map something in a place where the Bible doesn't say it goes. The map makers are wrong. The Bible is right. Remember, all map makers are biased. I made the maps for the RVG. I am also biased. I believe in a promise-making, promise-keeping God. And I believe God's promise to preserve his words through all generations. And I am scared to death to change a word of them. That's my bias. What's yours? God bless you and have a wonderful day.